Hello everybody! In this video, I'm going to go over the APCSP create task and the question of how does your list manage complexity. This is one of the most commonly missed questions, but there is no reason at all for you to miss this point. You're going to see six examples of how you can score this point and be on your way to acing the exam. So let's get going. The first example I'm going to show is when I pick an item from a list with a number. In this example, I wrote a game show program with a list. The program asks me what prize I want and I answer with a number. With a list, I can print out my prize in one line. To see how adding a list manages complexity, let's look at this code without a list. Right away, the no list code is harder to read. The code does exactly the same thing, except it's got a bunch of if else's. So using the list is helping to manage the complexity of code readability. The other thing comes if I want to add prizes. With the list, mostly the only change I need to make is to change the list. If I use individual variables instead for each prize, if I were to add two prizes, I would need to add four lines to the if-else. If I were to add one million prizes, then I'd have an if-else that's two million lines longer, uh, more or less. So if I use a list, the code scales to big numbers much, much more nicely. So in the end, the list manages the complexity of code maintenance and scaling, that is, the complexity of the code growing. So to summarize this one, whenever I pick an item from a list, I'm managing the complexity of code readability, and I'm managing the complexity of code maintenance. So as far as how I answer the question, this is how an answer to my question 3b5 might look. I'm going to write about writing the program without the list, which is super important, by the way. Make sure you do that, and compare the two codes. By far and away, the number one most common mistake that people make is they do not talk about what the code looks like without the list. So be sure you don't do that. In my answer, I'm also able to put an exact number on how many extra lines of code I need if I don't use a list. And that's going to be 3n, where n is the number of items. That's going to be two lines for the if-else and one for the variable for that item. By putting a hard number on the number of lines I'll need, I can reassure the grader that I know what I'm talking about. The second example I'm going to show is picking a random item from a list. This is an example you could potentially work into many of your codes. The reasons that this is good are really similar to the example that I just showed where I picked a particular number from a list. In this example, I'm going to simulate the sorting hat from Harry Potter. The list is the list of houses that I can get sorted into, and I have a random number between 0 and the number of houses minus 1. And I get the range of that random number by using the len function. As with picking an item using a number, using the code with a list is a win for code readability. If I wrote the code without the list, I would have a big if-else for each house. And this is much worse with respect to code readability. The list is a win for the complexity of code readability. Again, as with picking an item using a number, using a list is a win for code scaling and maintainability. If Hogwarts were to expand and they needed new dorms, I could add my dorm to the list, but the rest of the code would not be changed at all. On the other hand, if I don't use a list and I have to add a house, I have to change my random number line and I have to extend this if else. So lists help manage the complexity of code maintenance and code scaling. My answer for 3b5 might look something like this. And this answer is almost exactly the same as the previous answer. The third example I'm going to show is adding numbers to a list. In this example, I'm looking for all the positive numbers in a list by making a new list and adding the positive numbers to that new list. So I start with an empty list. I'm going to loop over the original list. And if the number I'm on is positive, I'll add it to the new list. In Python, I use append, but other languages do similar things. To see how adding to a list manages complexity, we'll look at what this code looks like without the list. So first of all, this code is super unreadable. I need a lot of variables and a lot of if else's to keep track of which variable to change. I'm going to have more code, and it's going to be 2n plus 2 extra lines of code, where n is the number of numbers that I have or the items in the list. And this example right here is only if I have three items in the list. It's already super unreadable. This is going to get a lot worse if I add more items to the list. So what this list does for me, it manages the complexity of code readability again. But there's another problem. This problem is that I don't know how many variables I need ahead of time. On one hand, I might not have enough variables, and then the code would crash. And on the other hand, I might have too many variables, 
And then I'd have a lot of unused code and variables. So what this list does for me, it helps manage the complexity of variable management. So to summarize, whenever I'm appending to a list, whenever I'm adding to a list, I'm managing the complexity of both code readability and the complexity of variable management. I put up an answer to 3B5 so you can all see what my answer might be like. And in this answer, I talk about how the code is less readable because of all the ifs and else's, and also the difficulty of not knowing how many variables I need ahead of time and the consequences of having either too many variables or not enough variables. The fourth example I'm going to show is using a list method, in this case, sort. So a list method is a function that's associated with a list. And this means that you're using a function that's only available to you because you're using a list. So appending is a list method, uh, and that's a specific case of one. But in general, you can use almost any list method, and it will score you the point. So in this example, I'm starting with a list of numbers, and this list of numbers matches Tom Brady's touchdowns in Super Bowls. And I'm going to use my method, which is sort, and I'm going to sort these numbers, and Python is going to allow me to sort them. So to see how the list manages complexity, we're going to do the same thing we do every time, which is to look at the code without the list. And if you look at this code, right away, the code is hard to read. I didn't even finish this because it's so ridiculous and so long. You can tell that the bigger the list gets, the worse it's going to get. The actual number has to do with factorials, which is terrible scaling. Being able to use this sort method is going to help me manage the complexity of both my code readability and the complexity of code scaling. And again, scaling is just a fancy way of saying growing. So again, I've put up an answer to 3B5, just so you can see what it looks like. And in this example, I use sort. You could use reverse instead. You could use count. There's a lot of other methods. But basically, again, they are only available to you because you are using lists. So if you look at my answer here, I talk about what the program looks like without a list, which you have to be sure that you do. I have an actual number on it, 2 times n factorial, which I hope is right. But anyway, it's a lot more lines of code. And I talk about the scaling problems and how it changes when I have to add more and more items that I'm keeping track of. The fifth example I'm going to show is when I loop through a list, but only when I don't know beforehand how many items I have. In this example, I write a program that asks for the user's friends and prints them out one by one. The computer does not know how many friends there are ahead of time. This is important. Remember that. I'm splitting a string into a list, and I don't know how many there are ahead of time. To see how this manages complexity, once again, I'm going to look at the code without the list. You might be able to see right away that the list helps with the complexity of variable management, just like when we use depend. But lists also help me because I don't know, in this case, how many variables I need ahead of time. If I have too many variables, I would have a lot of unused line of code. And if I didn't have enough variables, my code would crash whenever I tried to add too many items. All right, so using a list is helping me with the complexity of variable management. Again, all of this is true only if you do not know how many items you have in the list beforehand. That's super important. So for my answer for 3B5, it might look something like this. I'm going to talk about the complexity of variable management and talk about if I wrote the program without the list and how my program would look if I wrote it without a list. I'm going to write about variable management just as I've done before. The last example I'm going to show is the ultimate cheat code, but you can only use it if you've used dictionaries. So this is an example that comes straight from the AP board. They talk about a sample program that somebody's written, uh, and they're using a dictionary to keep track of somebody's stats. And the answer that they accept is this. They say this list of stats helps manage complexity because it allows all the stats of the character to be in one area so they can be easily changed. So assuming that in one area thing is good for dictionaries, pretty much any dictionary is going to win the point here. And the AP's answer for how it looks without the dictionary is that each stat would have to have its own separate variable. So you can even take this one step further, and I have a code here that does that. I've written a vote counter program. This code right here has all the good things that the AP talks about, keeping all the stuff, all the information in one spot, not needing an extra variable for each stat or key. But it also has a pending, which is going to be an extra win. Because if you remember from before, whenever I'm appending to a list, it's a big win with respect to variable management. So my answer for 3B5, if I did something like this, would be something like this below. I'm going to talk about 
uh, how it had to use individual variables instead of using this dictionary, how it's much better because everything's in one spot, and this is the AP approved answer. But I'm also gonna talk about how the dictionary is a win from the point of view of readability and variable management. It's the same thing as when I used append. I'm gonna end this video by showing some examples that will not score the point. So the first of these bad examples is using a list to keep track of score. And this is an example that's given by the AP board as an example of a bad use of a list with respect to complexity. In this example, I have a two item list. The zeroth item is player one, the first item is player two, and it's their scores. So you might do something like this if you're playing Pong or any sort of two player game. This is not better than a list because I could have just as easily used two separate variables and it almost looks the same. Actually, the list might be even less readable. So if you're trying to score this point, avoid any lists where you only have one, two, three items and the number of items never changes. Something along these lines is when you pick a random item from a list, when I only have, say, three items. And rock, scissors, paper is probably the most common example that I see. Now, I could see this one going either way, but in this case, there's only three items in the list. The code without the list is not that much longer. The list might be slightly better, but really only slightly. So I would not do that this way. This could depend on your grader, and I don't really know for sure. I'm sure they have some guidelines, but I guess I wouldn't risk it. If I were in your position, I would say this. Don't leave it up to the judges. Make it super clear that it's a big win and you should get the point. The last of what I would call bad examples is when I'm looping through a list when the number of items in the list doesn't change or if I know exactly how many items there are in the list. So here I'm showing two codes side by side. They do exactly the same thing. One is with a list and one is without a list. The one without the list is really not that much better. And the reason is that I know exactly how many items are in the list. You really need some sort of win with that list, and you're not getting it here. On the other hand, if I don't know how many items in the lists, then I don't know how many variables I need, and I don't know exactly what code I would write. And in that case, when I don't know how many items I have, that's a win. All right, so that's all. I hope this helps you understand how lists manage complexity and how you can answer this question on the APCSP create test. If this was helpful to you, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.